Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to cover the new Ellie Shapeshifter Warlock by Armani Berserkas on Hearthprone.com. So this is an elemental synergy heavy Renounce Darkness Warlock deck, which sounds like it's kind of off the wall, and it definitely is. So the idea behind this deck list is to use Renounce Darkness to have a late game after you have a very defensive early game with Warlock Elemental cards. Uh, one of the cards that supports this in Elemental and Warlock is the Tar Lurker, which is basically a big brother to the Tar Creeper, similar to the Tar Lord that Warriors have, though instead being a 5 mana card with lower stats rather than a 7 mana card. The deck also features many situational cards, such as Corrupting Mist and Shadow Flame, which are sometimes very good, but other times end up being dead cards in the hand, especially if you have something like 2 copies of each. Everything in the deck that is not a Warlock card is a Elemental card from the Neutral set. And the advantage to having Neutral cards is that when you do Renounce Darkness, you'll still have the consistency of an Elemental package on top of whatever you pull off of Renounce Darkness. One of the things I really like about the deck, which is one of the combos I actually have tried to get to work well since the beginning of Angoro, is Glacial Shard plus Corruption or Corrupting Mist where not only do you kill a minion after a turn with a corruption effect, but by freezing it, you make it effectively useless on the field until that second turn where it dies immediately. Now the only downside here would be that that minion can be silenced or bounced back to the hand, but the only deck that really is running bounce cards at the moment is the Quest Rogue, and very few decks even have the option of really putting a solid a uh, silence card into their deck. Not a huge amount of silence boost at the moment. One of the problems I have with the deck is that I think it tries to do too much, so kind of trying to be a little bit zooish has possessed Villager and Ravenous Pterodax in the deck. Uh, but Ravenous Pterodax is best with the Ravasaur Egg, which is also not there. So at best, you're sacrificing a 1-1 to create a stronger Ravenous Pterodax, which is alright. Except for the fact that it's not really a board heavy deck, so the Ravenous Pterodax is at best decent. And I'm not sure it really fits in a deck like this, especially when you're not playing Curator. Another issue is that the deck seems to have a few too many elementals more than necessary. According to Firebat's videos, his deck doctoring, he says that about 6 elementals is where the deck fall off point is for elementals guaranteeing you can do something like a service, uh, Servant of Chalismos on turn 5. Uh, that said, there is also Thunder Lizard and Tolvir Stone Shaper in the deck, so with the current build, it's trying to hit a lot of those if you played an elemental last turn synergies. E even Blaze Caller, so that's actually 8 if you played an elemental last turn. So I guess in a way you would say, well, I guess the elementals are justified, but do you really want to play all of those if you played an elemental last turn cards? Um, cards like Tovir, Stone Shaper, and Thunder Lizard are kind of considered just sort of okay at the moment, and Blaze Caller is a really high mana card, so it's often a little bit tricky to get a lot of value off of it. And because it's not really a tempo-based deck, you might not want to play a Blaze Caller on an empty field where that 5 damage goes to the face. So your Blaze Caller might need to sit in hand a couple extra turns because your opponent just didn't really play anything worth hitting. I was able to pull off 3 wins and 0 losses when I initially tried the deck, putting in 2 Glacial uh, Elementals instead of 1 Tolvir Stone Shaper and 1 of the Blaze Callers. And that worked pretty well with a 3-0 win streak. However, that was in casual mode, and I thought that the opponents I went up against weren't in actually that difficult, really. Later, I tried this deck with a few other variants out, and progressively it seemed to get worse. Maybe I ruined the deck a bit, or maybe it really has flaws to begin with. So one of the issues is when you run into a burn mage, or really any mage in the current meta, that tries to finish you with spells, is that it doesn't really matter too much if you set up a couple of tar lurkers in the mid to late game. Now, it doesn't matter so much that you have a Renounced Darkness in the hand, because all the mage needs to do is to get you down to about 15 or 10 HP, and then the rest is just hitting you with spells. And Warlock, since your life tap ability reduces your HP, it makes the mage's job very easy at the moment, and there's nothing in the deck to actually counter that, like having so much pressure that your opponent's forced to use burn on your minions. 
playing Dirty Rat to hit the Antonitis out of the hand and then kill it before it gets value with a Siphon Soul or something like that. But I think the real problem with the deck is that Renounce Darkness, although myself and many other people try to make the card work, it's just not very good in any kind of meta. Uh, because it's very hard to set up a situation where it's actually good. If you're trying to play a super late game deck, then you might just prefer to put in a few uh, really big cards like Jaraxxus or Alex Straza in the deck to win the game in the late game. Renounce Darkness, it takes your hand and it gives you basically tempo by reducing the cost of the cards, so it doesn't really support a very late game play style. Where on the other hand, if you try to play aggressively, like with Zoo, where well, you can actually take advantage of the reduced card cost, the odds are that in the mid game you're only going to have a few cards in your hand due to how Zoo plays out trying to get fast tempo onto the field to survive. Um, and finish the opponent off quicker. Um, the Renounced Darkness effect is really only good when you have a bunch of extra cards in your hand, since right after you play Renounced Darkness, you're giving up life tap. So honestly, when I think of Renounced Darkness, I still have to ask myself, why would I not just play Elise in the deck to get a pack of cards and draw five cards? Or why would I not just play a standard hand lock with Mountain Giants, Alexstrasza, Jaraxxus, or maybe Blood Bloom, Doom, combos like that? Especially because Renounced Darkness is so unpredictable on what kind of cards you're going to get, it's hard to justify. Because sometimes you will win, but most of the time it'll give you pretty bad cards, and pretty bad cards aren't good enough to win constructed matches, even if they have one minus mana. So I totally get that the creator was trying to have some fun with this deck, and it's the kind of deck I would try to make work, and I did try a few variations of it. But at the end of the day, uh, Renounced Darkness Elemental Shapeshifter just doesn't really pull together. The Elemental Package isn't strong enough, Renounced Darkness isn't that great of a finisher, and the fact that the deck can't really put any pressure on your opponent is a real problem, especially against decks that will walk over your 30 HP like a Burn Mage. So I've been Dark Skeleton, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Ali Shapeshifter Warlock deck. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more video content.